Now, according to the UK organisation responsible for entertainment and performing arts news, Stage 100 list, UK theatres are dominated by white middle class men. But have we ever wondered how people in the theatre from diverse backgrounds survive? Well, the Camola Collective, a London-based theatre and arts company, is challenging the status quo and looking to bring diversity in the arts higher up the cultural agenda. And I'm delighted to say joining me in the studio is the writer and performer Lisa Garzi. Lisa, welcome to the programme. Thank you um, for having me. Thank you. First of all, how <clears throat> long do you think this... Um, exclusivity, shall we say, has been around uh, and why do you think it still exists? I mean, this ex exclusivity is, has been around for, for, you know, years and years. And I think this, um, as you said, that um, the stage 100 list showed that British theatres are dominated by white British men. And that must change. And, and why it must change? Because, you know, it's really simple. If you go down the street, if you go on buses or trains, what you see? You see people from all, you know, all backgrounds. They're from all, um, all they, they come from different religions, they come from different castes, different colors, and the whole world is around us. And the, this is the this is the reality. This is the reality of, of, of today's society. And that has to reflect on our arts. Do you think enough people from diverse backgrounds go to the theatre? And do you think that perhaps if um, there was better diversity that might encourage them to go more? Of course. I mean, from my uh, experience, I, I, I saw like a couple of uh, very good theatre practitioners had to leave theatre. And, and, the, and one thing I would like to say that why it is so, why it is so, so urgent for us to, uh, you know, to address that. And uh, I'm very happy and, and encouraged to see that uh, Arts Council England and directors from uh, National Theatre and RSC, they're also uh, realizing the fact that diversity has to has to go forward because beca because who are you serving these arts for? Mm. What are you making these theatres? What are you making? You have to. You have to go to your communities, and if you want to build new audiences, you have to go to them. And one thing I would like to add that you know, in 20 years, more than half of the young people will have dual heritage, so you don't have any other option but to, you know, Move address, forward. yeah, diversity. Just tell us a little bit about your collective. So this is the Camolo Collective. What, what is that about? It is a London-based theatre and arts company. We are dedicated to telling stories from women's perspectives that often go untold. And the most controversial one that has received a lot of attention is the one, um, the Bira, Birangona? Birangona, yeah. Um, which is... Um, looking at women of war and women who had been raped. Yes, um, this is a play we developed. Um, we went to Bangladesh to do our research and develop, uh, you know, um, the work there. And then we came back and we, we did our uh, show. Uh, we toured UK and both Bangladesh. Birangona is a Bengali word. It literally means brave woman. And uh, um, they are the 200 to 400,000 women and girls who were uh, systematically raped and tortured by the Pakistani army and their Bengali collaborators as part of the Pakistani army's and war strategy. And this is strategy. in 1971. It's in 1971. And yes. you decided to document their stories in 2011. Mm -hmm. What kind of things were you really moved by that made you want to bring this to um, sort of performing arts? Uh, I grew up hearing about them, but I, I, I have never met them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge um, stigma around um, uh, rape as, as uh, everywhere. Um, and uh, when I had an opportunity to meet them in 2010, um, I went there. I didn't have any plan to create a theatrical piece then or anything. I just wanted to, you know, wanted to save some of their stories because... Well, let's very quickly have a listen to some of those stories. Yes, I think please. we have a, a clip that we can listen to. Yes, please. Amra shakal bikal rati re, barak bo bai re. Kaji? Or kaji? Amra shadi purbo, skirt purbo. Hat kata bhutu ato, vishan 
So explain what we were just listening to there. This is not the Birangano women. Uh, this is the a small video we made uh, like mm, um, 10 days ba back. Um, even less, um, to address in response to the sexual uh, harassment and violence um, exists all around us. Uh, recently, well, one incident happened um, in a celebration situation where uh, women were harassed and assaulted. Um, and that is the response uh, from Kamala Collective. Right, so it's to bring a better awareness through performance. And obviously it's timely as well. In India, we've seen over the last couple of years the, the number of women coming through, the protests, um, and, and the media, of course, jumping on. It's the not uh, only in India. If you, if you see around us, even I, I re read the other day, yes. um, one uh, scuba diver was assaulted by her instructor, you know, thousands of miles deep down the sea. It's all around us, and it, it is time for us to, for us to women that, uh, to stop, uh, uh, you know, victim blaming. We have to shift the blame to the perpetrators, which we never do. We always talk about what that women were wearing, who, what was she doing at this hour. We've seen already today um, the front page of The Guardian, um, which had a, a young woman who's um, from Oxford University, mm -hmm. and she was assaulted on the way home, and she's spearheading a campaign. Yeah. Trying to get women to come forward who have been attacked, who said that it's you know, important for women to have a voice and not to feel guilty. Do you think by using performance, this will help women to feel encouraged to come forward? It is a big deal to waive anonymity and to admit this has happened to you. Absolutely, because um, I mean, through our work, we have seen from uh, Birangana women, um, the rape survivors, women in conflict, and, and, and this, that uh, women are coming forward. They want to share. They want to talk about it. Um, and and, and we we have found that arts is a brilliant tool to to talk about this um, and uh, and and we have also seen that after this video we made the, that so many you know so many comments in both sides uh, and women are coming really were you met with any suspicion at all because often following a long period of time when people have sort of healed or they've put a lid on something that they don't really want to relive again to to dredge up all those memories, to dredge up those emotions. Um, there's suspicion as to why should I tell you my story? What benefit is it going to do? Is there going to be any justice served? Who's going to take any notice of this? W were you met with any resistance or were you surprised by how willing people were to share their stories with you? I mean, um, uh, Birangana women, yes, they, they, for the longest period of time, 40, you know, four decades, they did not talk about it, but it's not that they did not talk about it because they didn't want to talk about it, because society was not, you know, was not letting them to talk about it. You know, they were uh, taken back in the society as long as they don't talk about it. So I think, I think it is immensely important that we, we really, you know, address it and voice it for, for other women, you know, uh, and, uh, and, um, and we have seen that after we did our play here, tour here, you know, it's, it's, we're talking about rape survivors in Bangladesh in 1971. Mm -hmm. You might think that, it, I mean, Western women will never relate to that. But after we performed our piece, one of the women came to me and said that, thank you for telling my story. I was raped in the 80s and she was an Irish woman. So, you know, these things are immensely important mm. to, to, you know, uh, put forward. And you've managed to get funding, so now this performance is hopefully going to be turned into a documentary. Yes, yes. Uh, we are following the lives of five Birangana women, uh, and uh, I'm going to stay with them, uh, with each of them for a few days, just to know what, how they are and how have they been, um, um, they've been living their lives uh, since the war ended. So how they moved forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, the um, Kamola Collective is hosting a talk in East London yes. on Tuesday, I believe. What are you, what are you going to be talking about and um, what other sort of modes of performance arts are you going to be using to encourage people? We're going to talk about the diversity in theatres and why, why it is um, the 
uh, the only choice to go forward f for the arts. Um, and uh, five um, theatre practitioners will be um, talking about their experiences in terms of survival in this industry. And um, well, when you talk about practitioners, you mean from writers, directors to actors? Yes, and three and three uh, campaigners, uh, you know, and artistic directors and campaigners of, um, uh, for this um, diversity, they will also talk about. So uh, eight um, speakers will be talking about um, diversity uh, in theatre um, this uh, Tuesday at Rich Mix at 8 p.m. So please do come. Where do people get tickets? Um, you can call up and there's a, uh, if you go online and, and look up uh, Rich Mix and Is It Only Talk is the name of the, of the event. So if you look it up, you'll find it. Okay, uh, Lisa Ghazi, thank you very much for coming into Arise News and, and talking to us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.